you organize this whole thing? Yeah. So what's it all about? Uh, it's just skateboarding to represent peace. Oh yeah? Yep. Sounds pretty cool. Yep, I guess. So would you say it's just been a successful event? Uh, it's, it's a good start. We'll probably have it like, you know, like every few weeks or so. And hopefully it'll just grow. It'll get bigger and bigger. Here at Audubon Park? Yep. See, I told you you'd be waiting for us. All right, good. So why does the world hate us? And who is this us they hate? So what do you do now, sweet poet? Grin bullet teeth? Hold out for pious hugs? <laughs> based on the necessity of Samaritan love? How can we denounce the blindness of flag waving at terrorists? We can't see. The plans of militaries to bring them Afghans back, dead or alive. The immobilizing fear that the populace eats instead of airline cuisine. And the saintly diatribes of ministers salivating at the chance to bless our bombs. Can a poem really promote peace without the grease of Middle East petroleum to oil the sophisticated wheels of our daily life? You want me to say something profound? To propose a safe path through the minefield of international intrigue where cowboys are hated worse than rattlesnakes? Well, partner, it's simple. Either we rein our government in, or else we mosey along with the rest of the herd, stumbling in the dark of our dearly beloved democratic ignorance, oblivious to our sins, and perpetually surprised that so much of the world hates our comfortable asses. All right, that was perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Turn this tape into school, we'll get right back with you. All right.
U.S. Army Master Sergeant, uh, spent 20 years in the U.S. military, 22 on active duty. I spent two years in Vietnam in the 60s, two years in the Middle East in the 80s. And what I am doing uh, since this past Tuesday morning uh, is a fast and a, and a prayer vigil that is scheduled to last for seven days. Uh, it's, a, it's a water and juice fast, uh, uh, drinking nothing but water and, and, and uh, fresh fruit or vegetable juices. Uh, the, uh, the purpose of the fast is to offer up a personal sacrifice as an act of remembrance, of, of, of repentance, and reconciliation with the victims of the acts of war that were perpetrated against the United States, uh, the people, the government, and the nation of the United States on September 11th. Uh, the purpose of the prayer vigil is to uh, attempt to ensure that there will, in fact, be no more victims. Uh, I'm very, very concerned that uh, a rush to, to judgment and a rush to vengeance by the government of the United States uh, will do nothing whatsoever to eliminate the threat of future terrorist acts against uh, the people and the government and the nation of the United States and in fact could in fact precipitate a much, much wider and much, much more violent conflict situation that uh, quite frankly I just, I just don't want to see it happen. And, 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 uh, to, to go into the vernacular mode for a minute, I just don't want to see our government do something dumb. The question is, the most important question is, well, what's your alternative? What would you rather that we do? Should we just do nothing? Should we just surrender to the, to the terrorist? Uh, and uh, the, the alternative is, is this. What, what needs to happen is the most massive, intensive criminal investigation and manhunt in the history of the universe. What needs to happen is that all the law enforcement, intelligence, surveillance, communication, data processing, every other resource that is needed and is available from all of the nations and all the various transnational and international agencies on this planet need to place these resources at the disposal of an international criminal investigation team that 
determines the answers to the following questions. We, first of all, we know who actually conducted or did the deed on September 11th. Those are the people that, that hijacked, uh, hijacked the planes and flew them into the buildings, right? They're already dead, so justice is not at, at, at issue here. What we're talking about, what we need to know is who planned this operation, who financed this operation, who provided administrative, logistical, and operational support for this operation. Who exercised command and control over the operation, but most importantly, we need to know who ordered this operation. Um, it's one thing to find the people that perpetrated it, who planned it, put the whole thing together, and made it possible for it to happen. But the most important question is, were these people working for somebody else? And if so, who were they working for? Then once all of this information is gathered, answers to all these questions are gathered, it then becomes a, a, a law enforcement apprehension operation. And then once suspects are apprehended, then they go before an international court. That's the alternative. And to do anything less than that uh, will, will, will violate the, the most essential requirement here, and that is for justice. Because if the ultimate concern and interest is for peace, there must be justice. There must be justice because unless and until there is justice, there will be no peace. And there cannot be justice until there is truth. So really what the bottom line on this thing is, that's why this, this, this vigil is about peace and justice and truth, liberty, dignity, repentance and reconciliation. But the most important thing is, is the truth because we must know, we must learn the truth. Because until, until the truth about what happened on, on September 11th is known, there will be no justice and there will be no peace. Looks like we got a man coming down. You need to get some, yeah, what is this? some footage. It's, I'm not sure. It's some folks that were down at Cafe Brazil. I think they were doing like a, a jazz funeral for somebody. But here they come. So here's a great opportunity to shoot it. All right. <laughs>
Experience here is like being in a Fellini movie. I mean, that might be one way of describing it. This is, this is the most time I've ever spent in Jackson Square. My wife and I have lived in New Orleans for probably over 10 years now. We have spent very, very little time down here. And it just seemed like a wonderful, obvious place to do it. Now, this is kind of the core. This is the hub of Old Town, New Orleans. It's obviously a high visibility place. A lot of tourists, touristas come through here. A lot of locals come through here. So we, I just felt that it would be a great opportunity to, to be able to bring this message to a wide variety of folks and and my my real function here my real purpose here is to attempt I mean, what i'm trying to do is is cast either seeds of hope and faith or else seeds of doubt and confusion right and what, what i mean by that is there are a lot of people who believe that war is not the answer in this particular situation we're told that by the media and by the government apparently that the, the polls are saying that 80 percent of the american people want to have a war they want revenge they want retaliation they want retribution um i didn't believe that when i first read that and i still don't believe it now particularly after six days i've talked to 140 150 people and of those 140 150 people that i've talked to and had an opportunity to ask them these are people from all over the country and a lot of folks, a lot of locals, asking them, well, how do you, how do you, how do you feel about this? What do you think we should be doing? And people do not want that war. It's 80 to 85 percent that do not want war. What they want, they want peace. But beyond peace, they don't want nothing to be done. They want justice. They want accountability, and they want security. They want to find out who did this, why it was done, how it was done, and then they want them punished for it. As far as accountability is concerned, they want to know what. What were the FBI, the CIA, the FAA, the Department of Defense, what were these guys doing on September 10th that enabled this thing to happen? And finally, they want security. What they want, in a, what they want is some sort of assurance, not, not just words, but actual proof and evidence that, what, that something like this will never, ever, ever happen again. But they are not prepared for the creation of a big brother police state in order to have that security. They do not believe that that's necessary. They do not believe that that's called for. They believe that what is, what is, what is called for is to find out what was the reason that the people that perpetrated this act and perpetrated this deed, why did they do that? They're, they're in these, they're, we're interested here, we're talking about here, and it's not me, it's the folks that we're talking to. They're interested in root cause analysis. Why? Ask that question, why? What have we, the United States, done that could make somebody hate us so much to do something like they did on September 11th. So, so there are a lot of folks that don't think. Like I said, 85 to 90 percent of these folks don't think that war is the, is the solution or revenge. Uh, they're looking for, again, justice, they're looking for accountability, they're looking for security. So this is where we're trying to be like a candle in the darkness, where essentially what we're doing in a, in a, in a world where we're completely surrounded by the waving displays of patriotism and the flags and the martial music and calls to war and calls to arms and calls for unity. 
there are some people that are growing quite concerned and are maybe in fact even be intimidated to voice these feelings that they have about peace as an alternative. We're told essentially that there is no alternative to war. You are either for us or you're for the terrorists. Well, essentially what that boils down to is that you're either for war as waged by an international organization of terrorists or you're for war as waged by the greatest, most powerful military superpower in the entire history of the universe. And there are a lot of people, a lot of very concerned, patriotic Americans who don't buy that. They categorically reject that that's the way that the world has become, that it's divided into you're either for the terrorists or you're for, or you're, or you're for the, the, uh, the nation state and you're for the United States in this war on terrorism. They think that a third way exists. They think that there is a third path, and they've demonstrated that here uh, over these last six days that I've been out here. So this is where we plant some seeds of hope and faith because I've had a number of people that have come up to me and just say, thanks for what's doing, man. And finally, I, I realize I'm no longer alone. I'm not the only person on the planet that feels this way. By the other token, there are a lot of people that generally feel that we, in fact, should go to war. And that war is the, is the response, and war is the appropriate response in this case. And in that case, what I'm hoping to do is cast seeds of doubt and confusion. I'm trying to, to get folks to maybe think things through and look at this whole system, look at this whole process, look at everything that has happened on September 11th, but well before September, and just ask whether or not we, in fact, have been given all of the necessary information that we should be given in order to be able to arrive at the decision as to whether or not this is an appropriate course of action. Then Friday, I really got word that I was in the right place because the Angel of Peace came here and joined me, and she's been here on vigil site with me, in fact, ever since Friday when she came. And our intention is to maintain this vigil site until there is peace. She's indicated that she's going to be out here watching over us during this entire uh, during this entire endeavor and during this entire entire uh, effort. So uh, uh, it's it's been a, just a wonderful experience. It's been a very heartwarming, very very uh, joyful experience for me personally. And I'm just having a kick, man, down there. I had no idea how much fun this place is. Yeah. Our intention is to maintain a permanent presence here uh, from sunrise to sunset every day with uh, at least one or two people on, on this peace site, on this peace camp, uh, until, uh, until this situation is resolved, until this situation is ended, until there is peace with justice based upon truth uh, that, 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 uh, that contains within it accountability and security, not only for the people of this country, but for the, for, for the people of the entire planet. We're, you know, we're looking at uh, beginning the process of maybe even taking back this planet. One, one heart, one mind, one soul, one person, one step at a time. So can people come down here? And come on down. We'd love to see you. If you want to come down and let us know when you would be available to commit an hour or, or a couple hours or a full day or a weekend or something like that to be on the site, come down and let us know. We'll, we're going to start up a list so we can start filling out a, a time calendar so we'll know when we've got the, got the site covered and what we need to do in order to, to uh, and you know, we'll provide you with all the signs and all the chairs and all that jazz. What we, what we need, we need folks that are committed uh, to the idea of giving peace a chance. So please do come down. Even if you don't want to come down and participate as, uh, as somebody uh, uh, on vigil site, just come on down to, to join us here because it's a wonderful place to be and there's some pretty magical things that are, that are, that are happening down here.